What a beautiful place to be in early spring. North Queensland, Townsville this weekend for the supercars. The dry tropics, it's been a two and a half thousand kilometre journey from Darwin, which was the venue a couple of weeks back. They raced in Townsville last weekend. They race in Townsville again this weekend. Gorgeous images over the top of Castle Hill looking at the Reed Park circuit. And this is our 13th visit to this location. And what a privilege it is to come back to Townsville. Robson Civil Townsville Super Sprint and our second instalment of supercar racing this weekend. Looking forward to seeing what happens in armour or qualifying because the way in which the field was so tightly bunched in that second practice session means that we're in for a treat very shortly. Now analyse the story so far, Mark Larkham. Thanks, Crompo, and we know qualifying is going to be a big bearing on the championship. So let's just have a look where we are in terms of the championship because we've got exactly what we winched for. Here's our top ten. Scott McLaughlin, 123 points back to Jamie Winkup. Mostert, Van Gisbergen, Waters, he's red hot. Nick Perkett's having a great run. So there's your top ten. But what I want to do is just have a quick look at points waiting. He's 123 points behind. If we look at the points from last weekend, you can see eight points first to second. Then down, you can see there, my blue lines I've got here as we get in. It's eight, six, four, two. So the further up the front you are, the bigger your gap you've got. Now, what you can see from that, you cannot afford to drop around because the gaps aren't big enough to get yourself back before the end of the championship. Let's have a quick look at the team's championship, see how your favourite team's going. This is much closer. Look at this, Red Bull versus Shell, 16 points in it. Remember, that gets you to the top of pit lane, which as you can qualify and you're about to see is really important. So have a quick look there where you're favourite team is. But what I do want to show you is the trajectory, because this is really where it's at. How has your season gone so far? I'll jump over this side, open up. Now I'm going to put Scotty out there, and I'm going to put Jamie Wink up out there, and I want to put Shane Van Gisbergen out there. Now if we go through our whole season, this is from the start of the year, you can see poor old Shane's had a rotten year. A lot of bad luck, hasn't really worked out for him, but look at this up the top. Winkup and McLaughlin is just stuck to him like glue. And if I just quickly put, say, uh, let's put Cam Waters up there and have a look at Cam. I'll tell you the one I do want to look at, Chaz Mostert. Look at that. He's hung in there as well. And as we go into these next couple of races, it's game on. Mark Larkin, thank you very much. It is. And we're looking forward to how this plays out. It's pretty tight. Control 123 the points five, at the top four, of the tree for our championship three, battle. Two, Even one, tighter in the team's that's championship. A green flag. Qualifying now, officially getting underway. Light control, thanks to Pulsar watches at the end of the lane. Flicking on now, in that previous practice session, if you weren't with the coverage, it was Cam Waters who was the quickest. 1 minute 12.3392. Now that was 0 0.0029 of a second quicker than Scott McLaughlin. Almost immeasurable, crazy tight margin. Now, he threatened to tip the result over last week, Cam Waters, with the pressure that he put on Scott McLaughlin. We rode over his shoulder for a long period of time and enjoyed every millimetre of that battle. They went to the race meeting this weekend in search of the micro-performance, tiny little bits and pieces of the performance in this car. Based on the numbers that we saw in that sec uh, second practice session, they may well have made some ground. But it's a deeper story. Mark Scaife, when you look at the split across the top, 10 cars, well let's just break them to pieces 5, 10 and 15 there are so many people that are competitive it's actually bizarre that when you really do look at the armor or pole analysis that it still falls to a couple of people because they're making it work now, not by chunks of tenths of second, they're, they're getting there by hundreds and even tinier margins than that, it's crazy. Absolutely when you look down, 17 cars were within half a second in the previous session and when Jess was just asking me a second ago as to what I thought were the people to beat in qualifying, I had to name half the field because seriously, you've got to go through Mostert, Winkup, Courtney, Perkett. Clearly what you just said about Cam Waters being the real combat with McLaughlin for qualifying, that's a real point. Now who's he following? Is he following Fabian or is he following... Cam Waters is following Fabian. Is he? It's okay. Scott McLaughlin who's just uh, further ahead of those guys at the moment. Now, remembering that there's several games to play here. One is, they need a verification run, they need to make speed. They need to make sure that if they're capable of progressing, they can, and they've got a very fast car. But you also need to stay out of the last four cars here so that you can progress to the next group. Riding with Cam Waters, Monster Energy Mustang. Run into turn two for him. Now, sector split-wise, and I wrote them down earlier, 
Anybody that does a 21-5 or better in the first sector, well, their hair's on fire. They're going to be going pretty quick. If you do a low 26 in the mid sector, you're in pretty good shape. So we'll keep an eye on the splits for you. Let me roll you through them. McLaughlin 21-6-1. Van Gisbergen a 6-0. Cam Waters a 6-1. So three of the real protagonists are within one hundredth of a second in the first sector. It's a pretty good lap by McLaughlin. We're on board with Cam Waters. Well, Todd Hazelwood has actually just punched a 21-5 in that first sector. Yep. That matches the sort of numbers that Waters and McLaughlin did in the previous practice session. Our first indication of real pace now in Armour All qualifying. McLaughlin will be the first to the line because they exit the pit lane first in the queue. The indicative number is impressive. It's a 1 minute 12.39. Here's Waters. Oh, so close. How's that? 39 ten thousandths of a second. A 12.39 plays a 12.40. Fantastic opening account. And it was a 12.33 for Waters in that previous session. It's only 6 100 slower. Here's Hazelwood. The numbers off the bat for him in the first sector are eye-watering. Fantastic performance. What has he got? Good enough for position number five on a 12-5. Now remember, they've got five sets of tyres. Everybody from the start of this session sideways. Great car control. Alex Davison trying to break it and turn it into turn seven. He ends up having to dribble off the road. But it was a nice bit of car control to save that car from spinning. That was both brakes. That was, was. B-R-E-A <laughs> and B-R-A. So he's trying to break it in That's both right. respects. Because when you get cranked sideways like that on a street circuit, you can hurt the car. But uh, Big Al's got a pile of experience in these cars and international racing experience, and he wrestles it back under control. So I was trying to explain before that big moment of Alex's that you've got five sets of tyres. They basically have to hand all the other tyres back that they've used through practice one and two. And from now on, there is no more games to be played. You've got five sets. They're all of the soft compound this weekend, as the orange light indicates in the windscreen of each of the cars. And in this session, there's almost no choice. You've got to be on your first run. You've got to be on a green tyre. So anybody that's north of those mid-12s, they're immediately going to be safe, based on what we've seen so far. You've been talking today about the track condition. Temps come up, by the way, to about 25 degrees now, which is pretty much where the expected top is supposed to settle in the 25, 26 range. You can see out to the east, it's clear. To the west, it's a little cloudy, but there's more direct sunlight now than there was early on. But what has happened is the wind's picked up. Right. So it's between about 15 and 30 kilometres an hour as it goes from the east, which is a tailwind on the run down here, down to turns one and two. And that's the skyline looking over towards coastline and out towards Magnetic Island. So fastest at the moment, Scott McLaughlin, 1 minute 12.3. He's got 0 .0039 up his sleeve over Cam Waters. What a fantastic battle it is between those at the moment, those two drivers. And then Shane Van Gisbergen's done a 12.48. So the margin back to him is just minuscule. You can see the evidence of the breeze from the flags and fantastic to have supercar fans attending the race meeting again this weekend in Townsville. I think Van Gisbergen, as I said a little bit earlier today in the coverage, is likely to be much bigger thorn in the side of those at the sharper end of the field. He's just slightly clear at the moment of Jamie Winkup, Todd Hazelwood, Jack LeBrock, Fabian Coulthard, then Macaulay Jones, Gary Jacobson and Rick Kelly. That's your 10. Now only 20 of the runners have actually had a crack there and that's a bit of a rare sight to see driver of the 97's vacated the seat. Gone to Magnetic Island for a look. Why wouldn't you? And we've got just on three and a half minutes remaining now in the first portion of Armour qualifying. So. so we're just listening in there as to what he's saying to Grant McPherson, his engineer. And, and I would imagine on 12.4 he's probably pretty happy with that. So the, it's the bottom four that everybody will be focused on here. So. There's a combination of scientific analysis and innate communication between a couple of people who know each other well in Grant Person and Shane Van Gisberg and a lot of body language in Shane's description of the car. But he looks to be competitive, which is great news for the race this afternoon. And some haven't even had a run yet, so we're seeing a lot of cars right now. So some of those people that we said were going to be in contention for pole position this afternoon is Holdsworth, Courtney, 
Reynolds, Deep Esquale, Mostert, Winterbottom, Percat, Pi. So a lot of the next group are having a run right now. So we'll get a much better feel for what the overall group level is at the end of this session. Definitely more sunlight, isn't there? So that UV will affect the running, but sometimes more rubber down tends to counter that at the end of the sessions. So we'll see what this does. Now, where are you safe? I mean, you're relatively for the front runners to be in the top 20 in this session is probably not too bad. It'll be much higher pressure in the next, se next segment when you've got to finish in the top 10. I wouldn't want to stare at the dash at the control line that had anything that started at 13. No. You're right. That's exactly right. So last of the 12 8 is Macaulay Jones in 8th. Yeah, you might get away with a low 13, but you won't want to drift too far away from that if you pick up on Chance Mostert. Well, Chance got on the podium last weekend, and that weirdness in the final race. It's his first sector line there, he's done 21 6, which is not too bad. So for 6 8, best we've seen in sector 1 is Hazelwood, it's done a 5 7, 21 5 7. So sector-wise at the moment, in fact, just as I speak, David Reynolds has gone quicker than anybody in the first sector. Last of steer, hasn't it? Yes, uh, but that car looks to be steadier than this time last week. Exactly. So Chaz was really having to arm wrestle that car last week. Came off the apex of it, in fact, quite a long way then through turn 11. That cost him pretty dearly then. He ran very wide. And David Reynolds has gone on with this lap in the mid-sector. He's done a 26-3. He's lost a couple of tenths on McLaughlin in the mid-sector. So Reynolds quick in sector one. McLaughlin fast in sector two. Van Gisbergen fastest in sector three at the moment. Mostert gets up into the top ten. He did a 12-7, but he threw probably the best part of a tenth and a half to two, maybe more away down there at turn 11. Yep, what's this do for Davey? As Reynolds goes up 12 spots into seventh, just ahead of Mostert. James Courtney now up 10 spots. What about Anton? He makes a nice exit. Bryce Forward comes up 11 spots to 10th. What does Anton do? Great job. Up 18 positions to P3. The 12 4 2. Excellent lap. That was bright and shiny for Anton. Jack LeBrock, too. He gets up into position number six for the super cheap outfit. Here comes Nick Perkat. He gets it into the top 10, up into 8th position for him. We're about to see the chequered flag in the first portion of Arbor Hall qualifying. It's the bottom four cars that are vulnerable. So it's Heimgartner, Kostecki, Pitha and Davison. Jack Smith just got himself up into 20th and perhaps out of harm's way. No, Davison now moves up into 18th and that drops Smith, Heimgartner, Kostecki and Pitha into that bottom elimination group. Still people to complete their laps though. Kelly through turn 12 is a lot of exit space there on that little apron concrete apron against the fence He's right on the edge here sitting in 20th position and he's got Andre Heimgartner his teammate right behind him trying to claw and Andre does do it he had pace early on so he moves it up into 13th and that pushes Rick out so Rick Rick Kelly Jack Smith Jake Kostecki and Chris Piffer uh, the cars seemingly that won't progress at this stage. Here's Jack. Turn two. And how's the big slide there? Lock the rears. How's the repeatability of the Rick Kelly laps? A 13.0157 plays a 13.0172. So 15 ten thousandths of a second was the difference there from lap to lap. Anton Di Pasquale was ragging it there on the exit of turn six and that lap that he did that was good enough to get him up into third spot was a one minute 12.42. There's the times for you. So McLaughlin heads it. It's the point that we made earlier, Mark, about these ridiculous fractions between McLaughlin and Waters. <laughs> zero, zero, three, nine. Get the calculator out and work out what that looks like in distance. Then it's Di Pasquale followed by Van Gisberg and Windcup, LeBrock, Hazelwood, Percat, Pye and Reynolds. Remembering that all this does this gives you a ticket to advance to the next portion of Armour All Qualifying. The times get scrubbed, we start again. But the bottom four cars, they've had their grid positions set. We've dulled the names. So Rick Kelly, Jack Smith, Jake Kostecki and Chris Pitha. That's their starting positions for our race coming up this afternoon. Robson Civil, Townsville Super Sprint. And we've got three sprint races again this weekend. And a lot more direct sunlight on that racetrack at the moment.
want to have a good look at this, Scopey, because we did this last week as well. It'll tell us a lot about the behaviour of the car. Is this car going to be good enough to go on with the job? We ride now with Scott McLaughlin at Townsville. Today has just been a battle from the outset and unfortunately just missing out there on that qualifying session. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, so unfortunately it's not a mistake, it's a reflection of where we're at at the moment. We've had a uh, challenging three rounds, to be honest. We haven't been able to follow a lot of understeer and today we've had a lot of troubles. We had a bolt come loose somewhere in the um, manifold area and a throttle got jammed on, a few other issues with the car and we've changed the setup dramatically. So from a driver's point of view, it's very hard to know what you're going to get with a car when you've just got that one lap on a green. So obviously I'm deflated and the team's deflated, so we've just got to, um, I guess, take everything we can from the changes, understand what's going on and just try and get uh, a better result for ourselves. I know that you guys have been working so hard behind the scenes. It's it's been a tough slog for, for this team right from the get-go, but how can you go into this race with, with a clear head, a clear mind, and, and try to try salvage something from today? Yeah, I've got a lot of energy um, to get in the race and move it forward. It, it's one thing I love. I love jumping in and, and racing the car and trying to work out a way of uh, outsmarting the others and hopefully out-strategising them to move forward. We've had a struggle with our pit stops. Every time we've pitted in the last five rounds, we've lost several positions. The guys have worked really hard on that, so today will be a good test for us there and see if we've been able to make some improvements. But, yeah, we've got to improve the balance of the car. It's easy for everyone when you've got a fast car. It's easier for me and it's easier for the guys because they're not throwing changes at it in between those sessions. So uh, we've just got to find what's going on with that Castrol car and, uh, and get it back to where it should be. All the best, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Rick qualified in 21st position. My theory earlier, Mark, was if you saw a 13, that wasn't going to be good news. Now, one driver with a 13 got away with it, Gary Jacobson. Everybody else with a 13 on the dash didn't. So, unfortunately for Rick Kelly, Jack Smith, Jake Kostecki, Chris Piffer, their grid positions are now frozen. What did you think of Scott McLaughlin lap? I was just about to ask you. I think the car is more stable under brakes. Definitely doesn't look as nervous. When he first went to turn it last weekend, he didn't have a lot of confidence in it. And I think the thing that it looks like is in the high-speed corners, it's more agile, but it's not in the slower stuff. It's probably a little more understeery in the slower stuff. What about you? It was good enough to be 39 thousandths of a second better than Cam Waters. So it's only just, isn't it? But it was hard. I was thinking, OK, where are the things that look obvious that you'd go back and talk to Ludo about? Now, obviously, we're not getting the seat of the pants feel of what's going on out there, but there wasn't too much. I didn't see any brake lock lights. didn't see any big evidence of push or oversteer off the corners. So that car is very, very close to tapped out, which then begs the question, have they got anything more in this? So if you looked over his shoulder, was there anything left on the table with that car? Well, this is the, this is the point now, because you're going to hook up behind McLaughlin. This is clever. So he's rounded up Fabian Kulksa. Now, back it off a little bit now. Back it off. Bring it back a little bit. And just give, that's exactly what he's doing. Give himself the best run at it. And this is the best guide. It's like a big tow rope. Wherever he goes, you go with him. I love it when you send Mark telemetry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Remembering that out of this group of cars, all we're really looking for is the final 10. So if you're a front runner, you need to get yourself into position to have a crack at the top 10 shootout. What a nail biter of that previous session was. 0 0.0039, the gap between McLaughlin and Waters. Here they are, head to head, on the run down towards turn two. And pay particular attention to the wheel work, to the lock lights. Listen to that engine in the background.
This is going to be close. McLaughlin was fastest in sector one. Waters at a point was fastest in sector two. Now clips by Winker. It will be super tight at the top. It's a one minute 12.2 for McLaughlin. A one minute 12.4 for Waters. Here comes Winker. There's more people to play in here. Have a go at Winker. He's done a 12.2 as well. The margin's crazy tight. LeBrock moves up into fifth. Holdsworth to sixth. Courtney's in here. James moves up into fifth position. What about Mostert? Let's have a look at Mostert. He was very fast in the in the middle sector. What does this do for him? And he goes up 10 spots into third. There's 0.08 of a second across the first three cars. Nick Perkat, position oh. number five. Crazy intensity at the sharp end. Macaulay Jones makes it into the top 10. So the top 10 is the critical thing here. Winterbottom now to eight. Pushes McCauley to 11. Our 10 at the moment is McLaughlin, Winkup, Mostert, Waters, Hazelwood, Perkat, Coulthard, Winterbottom, Davison just squeaked into the top 10. That's impressive in the local legends entry. Then James Courtney now in 10th. And outside, LeBrock, Jones, Holdsworth, Jacobson, Deeper, Squally, Pye, Reynolds, Heimgartner, Van Gisbergen. So what's your read now? So what number becomes safe this time? It was a 13 dead, you read it right in the previous one. What is it now? Is it a 12-7, 12-6? In the sevens and eights somewhere, isn't it? Somewhere yeah. in that realm. So we've still got just inside five and a half minutes <laughs> remaining in the session. I've started to get the sweats just thinking about this. So last weekend, two pole positions for Jamie Wincup, one pole position for Scott McLaughlin. Look at the top of that tree at the moment. McLaughlin over Wincup is 0 0.0121. McLaughlin over Mostert in position three is eight one hundredths of a second. Extraordinary. And the dud, the bloke that we pumped up so hard before the start of this, the bloke that underperformed probably is Cam Waters. He did a 12-4, so he's two tenths away. We thought that he would be right there with McLaughlin. So that last sector of his lap wasn't quite good enough. He was right on. You called it. He was in, within 0.05 of McLaughlin at the second sector. There's a bit of data to process there, wasn't there? Certainly. <laughs> two images on board with drivers at different parts of the track. And we were staring at the timing as well and then trying to watch hands, listen to engines, look at lock lights. Shane Van Gisbergen. So the aim of the game in this session now, with just under four and a half minutes remaining, is to get into the top ten. Cam Waters leaps yeah. out, so he must feel safe on a 12-4, and I think you should. So it's McLaughlin, Wincup, Mostert, Waters. Hazelwood's done a fantastic job. He's had success here previously in Dunlop Super 2, and he was strong again last week in that final race. Here's Lucko. As I saw you this morning, trying to fix yeah. your car. Sorry, mate. Great lap. <laughs> well done. I can't remember seeing you guys throw so many springs and set up as I did in these four garages this morning. You've yeah. had to work for that lap, pal. Yeah, no, it's uh, full credit. Everything goes to these guys. They've worked hard during the week to find me a balance. So I gave them a wish list of what I wanted um, to make me feel better in the car. And uh, we found a little bit of it last qualifying, obviously, last week. But, um, yeah, they, they put a lot of brains trust into this. And, um, yeah, it's all them. So, yeah, really proud to do the lap for them. Thanks, mate. Well Thanks. done. Cheers. Cam Waters, you ended up fourth in there, mate. You're out of the car. You feel confident with that, but do you feel like you achieved everything out of it? You got everything out of the car? Uh, I don't think I got everything out of it, but, um, yeah, we just don't want to run another set of tyres. So we make the shootout. You want to have green. So, um, yeah, we just thought we'll sit it out. There we go. What was the big difference for you between that first qualifying run and that second one that we just saw? Uh, I cleaned up a couple of my mistakes from the first one, but then a couple of the other ones didn't disappear. So, um, yeah, we just got to get it all together. The car's not perfect to drive, but it's still quick. So, um, yeah, we'll be right. Thanks, Cam. Thanks. So, man of the match at the moment is Alex Davison in ninth. Yeah. He's done a really good job. So that's a great lap. So let's go through who's from 11th backwards because there's huge pressure on some of our very, very best drivers. So LeBrock, Macaulay Jones, Holdsworth, Jacobson, Pye, Heimgartner, Di Pasquale, Van Gisbergen, Reynolds and Forward. So of those people that you would expect to get in, you would think Reynolds, Van Gisbergen, Di Pasquale, they'd, they'd be right on it. So the pressure at the moment for those young men to put a lap together with only two minutes remaining is extraordinary. 
and great entertainment for us. So let's see what this translates into lap speed wise. And the, you're 100% right on this. There's a whole bunch of people that you might expect to see inside that top 10 at the moment who are not. It's the knife edge of the game, and this day's changed demonstrably. Yep. Significant cloud cover right at the beginning of the day. Not a lot of breeze early on. In fact, it was really still first thing this morning. It's gradually picked up from the east. There's more direct sunlight. The trap is you can chase this morning's track, and it doesn't translate now for quality. Chas Mostert's out of the car and watching. He's sitting comfortably in third. That's his teammate, Bryce Fullwood. Young Northern Territorian has put in an impressive campaign so far in 2020 for Mobile One and Middies. Didn't quite hit the target down there at Turn 2. Van Gisbergen, we've got a read on his sector speed here. Now Bryce did a 21.8 in the first sector, but Van Gisbergen did a 21.58. Now that's only three one hundredths away from what Scott McLaughlin did. So Shane's lap so far is well on the numbers. And so is Dave. 21.58 plays 21.59. We're hearing that the Erebus cars have got three fresh tyres on them, not four. So that might be the ploy to try to retain good tyre quality through the course of the weekend as we pick up on Bryce Forward now down to turn 11. Van Gisbergen has definitely gained ground on Bryce. What's his next sector look like? Pretty good. Shane did a 26-1. The best we've seen so far is Chaz on a 26-04. So Van Gisbergen's lap is going to put him somewhere in the top five on current estimates. Bryce Fullwood makes his run now to the control line. He's sitting in 20th. He moves it to 7. He's done a very nice job on a 12-5. Van Gisbergen does a 12-2. That's only two one-hundredths away from peak speed. That's a very good lap by Shane. He's well in the game. Jack LeBrock up into 8th position now. Scott Pye moves into 13th. Those that are vulnerable at the present time are Coulthard, Holdsworth, Courtney, Winterbottom, Pye, Davis and Jones. Davis finally leaps into it. He's fifth. For Penrith Racing, well done, Anton. Heimgartner comes up into 15th. But remember, we're looking at and focusing on the top 10. McCauley Jones has been very quick so far this weekend. He's sitting in 19. What's this got? Not quite good enough in the first sector. Cropper is about three tenths away in the first sector. Now, whether he put fresh tyres on, I don't know. So we'll cover that for you afterwards. But there's some big names that have been knocked out of the top ten. David Reynolds is, is tenth. And under him is Fabian Coulthard, Lee Holdsworth, James Courtney, Mark Winterbottom, Pye. There's a lot of really serious operators that have missed out. Now, Courtney's done a 21-7 in the first sector and a 26-2 in the second sector. He could still dig out from here. It'll depend on what this last sequence of corners looks like for him. It'll be right on the edge. It might be just outside. We'll see. Look good under brakes. We commented on that earlier on about the way in which that car was pulling up. Remember, he was quicker earlier today. Has James got enough in the boost mobile Mustang to be able to advance? No. 13 flat for him, so lost a little bit of time in the next run. How's that? A 12-5 ended up being the cusp. So David Reynolds is the last of the runners to stay in the 10 with a 12-5-3. How's that? Three tenths of a second separates the whole of the top 10. <laughs> it's remarkable, it really is. It's so impressive from a driving and athletic standpoint and from an engineering viewpoint as well. It's very impressive. So insanely tight margins and we've now sorted out those participants for our top 10 shootout. McLaughlin, check out the number over Jamie Winkup. They shared the armor all poles this time last week. What's going to happen in our top 10 shootout? Then we've got Van Gisbergen, Mostert, Deep Pasquale, Waters, Hazelwood, followed by Percat, LeBrock and Reynolds. David looks stronger this weekend, doesn't he? In all the names that you can see here that have been dulled from positions 11 through to 24, their grid positions are now set for our 22nd race in the sequence coming up this afternoon. We are going to take a very brief break now. When we come back, it's time for the Armour All Top 10 shootout. This one should be a ripper. set now for the Armour All Top 10 shootout. Really looking forward to this one. Those first two segments of Armour All qualifying were absolutely fantastic. 
and in fact even the practice sessions this morning. This is exactly what we saw when we went to Darwin because the learning that's applied one week to the next condenses the field. This is the lineup of the drivers that you're going to see now and they'll roll out in reverse order. So David Reynolds in the Penrite Racing, Holden Commodore will be the first guy to run on the circuit, but it's a nice mix of names and teams. One or two heavyweights that didn't make it. Let's go to Craig. Chaz Moss, it's uh, great. P4, so you're in the 10. But through practice, I've been noticing there's a lot of attention to the rear of your car. So look like rear preload, rear wing. Are you looking for rear or are you trying to find some front? Um, I'm trying to find a bit of everything, really. It's, uh, yeah, we just got a little bit of a break misbalance at the moment compared to last weekend so um, we're trying to tune the car around that um, I think the brakes will get better across the weekend but uh, yeah we're just a little bit focused on just trying to, to neaten it up a little bit more just the la last part of the stop I just don't have a whole lot of confidence in the car but saying that it's obviously pretty quick so um, yeah it's would have been nice to put it on P1 in that session but um, well, just under a tenth away so it's uh, we're pretty happy it is very close in the times did you make a mistake or do you think there's more in the car I was probably pretty tapped, to be honest. I was pretty happy with that lap. Um, the Q1 part, oh, I definitely made a mistake, and that's why we're a bit further down than what we'd like to be. But um, just good to get the car in another top 10, keep building confidence with this team and our car and our package. And, um, yeah, like I said, there's still a lot of work to do, but um, at least we're having a, having a dip. Well, good luck with the top 10. No worries. Good luck with the commentary today. Anton, I just spoke to Mirko De Rosa, your engineer. He said he literally emptied the engineering bucket prior to that qualifying session, filled it back up again. What do you do to tune for the shootout here? That was an awesome effort to end up fifth. Uh, yeah, it was good. Um, we went into pra uh, out of practice and the thing wasn't very good. And obviously, from what we learned last week, didn't really carry over too much. So we have to try something completely different we haven't tried in the two weeks we're here. And uh, it rolled out pretty good. So um, I've probably got to do a, a little bit better job to compete the across the front guys and uh, we'll see how we go. So a little tune up here for the shootout or we just leave it as it is and try and tune you up? I'll tune myself up and put a big lap on and see where it ends up. Um, they, both those laps were decent but they weren't perfect so to get a per to get if you do a perfect lap you know that's what these guys are doing so we have to do it and uh, we'll see how we go but the thing's close um, obviously everyone else is very close so either way you have to do a good job to be up there. Either way, sounds exciting. Thanks, yeah, Anton. That's good. Cheers, guys. Thanks. You see Fabian Coulthard filling out his little track map, writing his engineer's notes down there. Uh, mate, really buoyed about your performance this morning. It was looking strong. I was standing there watching, and you didn't get your car shipped out at the end there, did you? It looked like you are on green tyres ready to go, and it didn't happen. Yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, you're always trying to make it better, and, you know, we, we tried to make a change and, like you say, run out of time. So... It would have been nice to potentially, you know, get back into the shootout, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. Thanks, mate. Nice. Cheers. Todd Hazel, so we're just doing a dance in the garage here. Uh, congratulations getting into the top 10 shootout. Well done. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, the team at uh, Black Duck Racing have done a, an awesome job today, and uh, the car feels really strong in building of what we learnt last weekend. Obviously, we walked away with a P5 in the final race, so it's good to finally see that momentum building, and looking forward to see what we can do in the shootout. Yeah, we look forward to it. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you. About to see our first runner come out now, David Reynolds, Penrite Racing for Erebus Motorsport, released in a moment by the Pulsar Watch right at the end for the pit lane control. So far, seven wins in his career, 13 armour all pole positions. Control He's sitting seventh in the championship. Five, he advanced one position four, last weekend. Three, and two, big mission one, this weekend green, to try and make the front tyres oh, behave a little bit better. He's had a couple of poles at this location. Been racy got involved in the stoush with Scott McLaughlin last year in wet conditions in the rundown to turn two. It was a fifth, a tenth and an eleventh last weekend for David Reynolds. Changing the way in which they're approaching their engineering strategy after the last several race meetings as well. That was put into place last weekend. Tom Morey's data engineer together with Alistair McBain, his regular engineer who's doing it via cyberspace Locked down in Melbourne at the moment and contributing to the performance. The overload for Barry Ryan with the team was really extreme. So the number of people that are travelling with the circus team by team at the moment has been reduced by comparison to the normal crew sizes that we've had in years gone by. So we're seeing all sorts of people that are typically in senior capacities having to do all kinds of jobs in these teams and that's been a real challenge. One of the great things about this top 10 shootout, six different teams represented in this and trying to make these cars work for one lap is extremely hard as you can see there's a lot of different styles of corners it's imperative that you make the car 
stop nicely on a track like this, and it's imperative that you make it turn with some real response. The front of the car is so important to get it to the corner. It's also got to ride the bumps, it's got to ride the curbs, and it's a real test for engineers and drivers. Front tyres have had a light scrub. The rears of uh, Brand Spanker's time that he used to get in here was a 1 minute 12.5. A couple of things to keep an eye out for. Anything in the first sector that's a 21.5, anything, yeah, will be good. Anything in the second sector that's a low 26 is going to get you in the game as well. So David Reynolds gets underway. And the theory behind this is that it's easy to excite the rear tyre. So you can control that with your right foot, but you want the fronts to creep up straight away and not late in the lap. That's the reason why they've gone out there with them slightly scrubbed. So on the approach to turn three is where we get an indication of what this first portion of the lap looks like for David Reynolds, and it certainly looked as though it got into turn two okay. 21-6-1, pretty good effort. First sector, that'll be hard to beat. And those scrub tyres are slightly better in the braking area. Very easy to lock a wheel with a shiny brand new tyre. This is a lot of the inside curb there. And six doesn't quite use as much of the right hand apron on the approach to seven as some of the other drivers, especially Van Gisbergen. What's our next sector look like? 26-2-8. Might be too far away from the time that he did before. Remember he did a 12-5 to get in. Peter Rosa and, and the Vivas Squally running the 99 car watching from the garage. Teammate David Reynolds into the final corner now. It's been a great lap so far. No obvious mistakes right on the money in both sectors. It's a good, healthy shootout lap. They're not easy to be able to put together, and he's done a 12-5. He's all but repeated what he did to get in there in the first instance. That's a very good performance, not an easy thing to do by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> they see all the micro-sector data, and... Uh, David's listening in the background. Nice work, young man. 12.5. Always good when you can repeat the quality time in a shootout. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Yeah, but last week we went a lot faster, so... Uh, oh, no, just the front tyres aren't working as well as, well as I'd like. And, you know, our focus is obviously qualifying. It's trying to make a better race car, so happy to be in the top ten. Great job. Good luck this afternoon. Thanks, David. All right. See ya. Cheers, boys. See you later. Next runner will be Jack LeBrock, Super Cheap Auto for Tickford, race winner in 2020. The 50th Supercar Weekend for Jack. Now, he did a mighty job in qualifying to be able to earn the right in the first instance. He's 15th in the championship at the moment. Last week was a 15th and 8th. Correction, that was a, uh, an 8th, a 12th and a 16th in the three races. But he qualified very well in the second race. He was P8. So he's been able to put it together in bits and pieces, and it's looking like he's made some advancement this week. Four used tyres for Jack LeBrock, using all of the road coming out of three. Nice. And he was 8 one hundred slower than David Reynolds in the first sector. Great shot. Dunlop Kirk Camp shows him flying over those curves. The cars looking very good. Tickford has been slowly but surely making strong ground with their cars. And Cam Waters was super close to the back of Scott McLaughlin last week. So uh, the second reference has now popped up for Jack. And in fact, he's just a tiny bit quicker than David Reynolds in the mid-sector. So he'll be very, very close, if not slightly better than David's time at the control line, provided he pulls it up square at the final corner. Nice lap so far. Used all the road. No evidence of big slides or wheel lockups. The car has ridden the bumps nicely. He does a 12-5-5. Goes to the top by the monstrous margin of 0.153. So just gets away with it slightly faster. One hundredth of a second between he and David Reynolds. And this is what I was saying. It looked like it rides this bump really nicely at the back of the pits. Just got the left-hand wheels on the inside curb. It settles nicely. He's able to gather it up and move it over to the left-hand side of the road. This is also a nice example of the way the car rides the bump. And when it lands, it tends to not really change the balance very much. It doesn't continue to understeer as a consequence of the landing. Nick Perkout, 31 years of age, R&J batteries, Brad Jones racing, Holden Commodore. Never had an armor or pole. Three times he started from second position, so front row starts, tick, no problem. 
Got to try and close out that last deal. At one stage last week, we thought he was on target to be able to do it. it didn't quite happen. Lost an engine on Saturday last week, much to his dismay. It really hurt the championship cause, but he's still in the battle. Sixth in the title fight. 1,069, and he's got nice new Dunlop tyres on this car to get this lap underway. Beautiful mechanism he used there to maximise the onboard speed. But what you've got to do is get the length of the straight extended. And what he did is he turned from so far out and turned it straight. He was on the throttle far earlier than anybody so far. It's a fantastic view. And you can see the time gain or loss showing in the centre of the dash there as well. Not going to be his focus until he gets later in the lap to get an understanding of where he's trending. They'll have put a reference lap in there. It's a wild ride when you leap off the curbing at turn three. And this is where the work rate becomes intense. Oh, understeer. It's right with that reference lap that they've got. Wonder what date they put in. He did a 12-4 in qualifying to be able to get in. Comfortably flat through the right-hander at 10. Andrew Edwards is the engineer, top right of screen, Brad Jones Racing. Jack LeBrock heads back into the Tickford garage. 0.17 up at the last corner. What's the exit like? Pretty good, it's actually 0.2 up on his best lap, or whatever the datum lap is. And he does a 12.47, goes to the top, nice job. That is a very good job. And in fact, again, as we saw with uh, David Reynolds, it's all but repeated what he did. He did 12.46 to get in here. BP Ultimate Replay this is what he did. shows See? what happened right at the start of the lap. So He held it so wide, and he did a beautiful job coming out of that corner. Nick Mark Scaife, that was a really nice lap. Well done, a 12.47, mate. Thanks, mate. Yeah, uh, ball. Oh, I made a little mistake in turn three and a bit wide into the fence there and it cost probably a tenth and a bit, so it's a bit disappointing, but great to have car in the shootout, but a bit of a shout out to my dad. Uh, happy Father's Day for tomorrow and thanks for everything you did to get me in this hot seat right now, so really appreciate it, so thank you, mate. Nice uh, words. Yeah, all good. Good luck. Excellent thanks. performance so far for Nick Perkat. He's been the fastest on a 12.47. It's his teammate now, Todd Hazelwood that we're going to see in action, who has form at the Townsville Street Circuit, Team Black Duck. 24 years of age, originally from Adelaide. Now, he got in on a 12-4 as well. Last week, he got tangled in all the trauma on Saturday, and then a 13th and a 5th, but an excellent 5th place Sunday afternoon. He's using the same tyre policy as Percat, so four green tyres. Geez, he almost gave the wall a swipe there at that little pinch point at your corner called 2.5. It's the fastest first sector. You said before that he was very strong in ordinary qualifying. In the last segment of qualifying, he was very fast in sector one, and he's done it again. That's the fastest of everybody so far. He started the lap very early too, Neil. He'd come onto the straight actually going hard. So this is a nice lap so far. Hungrier through turn six. He turned it in very early and it flew across the curb there. He's done this the best sectors of anyone in both one and two. Now, when you do a 21.5 and a low 21.6, he lost a bit of Missed ground it. down at 11. Now that's burnt him. But when you do those numbers in the early sectors, you're right on target with what Waters and McLaughlin are doing. But he just got himself in a tangle down there at turn 11. Maybe burnt a fraction of time. Up to the control line now for Todd Hazelwood, and nice. it's still a very good job. It's a 12-3. Begs the question what might have been other than what happened down there at 11. So that is an excellent performance. And in fact, that is quicker than he achieved in Armour All qualifying. So this was the one that cost. Right there when he turned it in, it just drifted wide. He's listening in the background. Hey, Todd, it's Neil. You should be proud of that lap at 12-3. Well done. We've lost you there, Todd, but uh, I'll translate for you. I made a little blue at turn 11. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next up, Cam Waters. He's been Mr. Excitement the last couple of weekends with the Monster Energy Ford Mustang. He has been quick. He wasn't quite there in that last session, but wasn't too worried about it during the interview. So, he got in on the strength of a 12-4, but we know he's got a little bit more pace in him. 
What's this going to yield for Monster Energy and for Tickford? Remembering he's had four armor all poles. Last weekend was a fantastic performance. He's had a pole at this location as well. Thoroughly enjoyed the pressure that he applied to McLaughlin last weekend. Four green tyres, the same as Per Cat and Hazelwood. And we'll give you this first set uh, just slightly down. He's lost two tenths on Hazelwood, who did the 21.55s on 21.75. He was a little bit conservative in the braking area. Then he you could tell by the body language of the car that this lap will get better. Sometimes from set to set, tyre for tyre, they change just slightly in terms of the warm up and how they feel in the early part of the lap. What's his part two for him? 25.91, that's the fastest of everybody in sector two. That's a very smart lap. So what does this do? Remember the little mistake from Hazelwood at that corner there at turn 11. Water's got through there nicely, he uses all of the road, even that concrete apron at turn 12. Gets it stopped, turned. Will spin is minimized. Does he get this lap together? He does with a 12-2-6. Great job, Cam Waters. That was pretty big, especially in the mid sector and what a recovery. Because in the first sector, he was a good couple of tenths down on Hazelwood. And he's done a 1 minute 12.2682 to get home by 7 one hundredths of a second over Todd Hazelwood. He's listening in the background, Cam Neal. Well done, mate. 12-2. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, didn't have the best first sector, but uh, found a lot in that last two, so pretty happy. Uh, I think the track's pretty quick, so hopefully we can hang on, but yeah, the other boys are pretty fast. Have fun this afternoon. Thanks, Cam. Thanks, mate. Will do. And on De Pasquale is our next driver for Penrite Racing and Erebus Motorsport, car number 99, 24 years of age from Melbourne. He was watching his teammate David Reynolds earlier in the game. He got in with a 12-4. It was a popular concept in that previous qualifying session. He's never had an armor all pole, but he has three times been third in qualifying. And I was too harsh on Cam Waters before because I said that that wasn't good enough with a 12-4-6 when he did it before. A 12-2-6 in this format, it certainly was. Great lap by Cam Waters. Two tenths faster than his previous. Roaded fronts, green rears for Deep Pasquale as he starts his lap. A tenth, an eighth and a seventh last weekend. Good, solid work in the top ten. Nice first sector. Very good on a 21.57. Ho hopped it off the curb on the exit of three. And the Petters damper by Supershock. You can see how hard it works over the curbs here. The circuit itself isn't too bad, but when they thump across the curbs here, the velocity of those dampers is extreme. 5-7. Plays 5-5 five, five in the first sector, so only a very small difference between Hazelwood and Deep Pasquale in that first sector. His second sector is a 26-1. This number is going to be good at the end of the lap. He's right there, Mark. Yeah, there's nothing in it, is there? Absolutely nothing in it. Can he finish the lap off nicely? Remember, Waters did the best sector two, so not quite a fair comparison to look at the end of the second sector. What's he got for a steep Pasquale? A 12.29. <laughs> 0.02999 away. That is a very good job. He's made a couple of tenths. Mirko, his engineer, uh, acknowledges that yeah, performance. Copy. And you see him staring uh, at the dash. Okay. Just, nice lap. Had a on the way to five. So he's made a couple Probably of tenths. Well, bit Not. of a slide at five, he said. But he made a couple of tenths over his qualifying performance. That's a big chunk of time on a track like this. It's a lot of positive lock on it there through turn eight, isn't it? He bounces it off the curb. He's got heaps of lock on it. Mossed it with the same tire policy again. Roaded fronts, green rears. Cropper. 28 years of age, lives on the Gold Coast, originally out of Melbourne, getting his lap sorted for Mobile One Appliance, uh, and Mobile One Appliances online. Chaz Mostert, 20 armor all poles banked in his career for 13 victories. So he has that innate and special skill that enables you to be able to put together those special laps. He's been a pole sitter here, he did it in 2015. Last weekend, his qualifying performance is very strong. In fact, the whole weekend was strong, bar what happened with that tyre on Sunday afternoon. 
Very deep under brakes. You could hear the front air dam bottoming. Got a little bit too much understeer when he first turned it at the corner. Again, no margin on that left-hand fence. Runs it down to the bus stop area. His first sector is a 21.63. It's just slightly slower, but he's in the game. Well, especially when you stop and consider how much time Cam Waters gave away in the first sector and then clawed it back through two and three. Nicely done through there. Nice flow for Mostert. Was able to keep the mid-corner speed up. He's only one-tenth away. He's still absolutely in this. Got to try to get it stopped down there at 11. He just ran it in with a little bit of understeer. Cam Waters looking on intently down the bottom. So does Adam DeBore. And the team at Walkinshaw Andretti United. What's Mostert got for us? Considering the time of day and the direct sunlight, they're making speed at the moment. Chaz, time good enough for position number three. He's done a 12-3. Cam Waters survives for another moment. So incredibly tight at the moment. There's only three one hundredths of a second separating Waters, Di Pasquale and Mostert. You remarked on the scuffing of the splitter on the road down there into turn two. Chaz is listening in the background. Hey, mate, it's Neil. Position number three on a 12-3. What are your thoughts? Yeah, man, I'm pretty tapped at that. So um, everyone's obviously found a little bit from last week, but we just uh, we are kind of in the same position. So we'll keep working hard, but, you know, just good to get the top 10 shoot out. Track conditions are pretty hot. It's going to be a tough race this Harvey. Congratulations. Well done. Have a good run this afternoon, Chaz. Thank you. Shane Van Gisbergen, mega fast Kiwi, 31 years of age for the Red Bull Holden Racing Team. He's had three wins at a couple of pole positions at this location, and we fully expect that he's going to be very quick here. Again, Van Gisbergen had a somewhat difficult run last week, but for that one podium, got tangled up in all of the other trauma going on in the Saturday race, but he's fast at the moment. 12-2 was the number he achieved to get in here, Mark. Yeah, four green tyres, but he and Wink Up just gets it stopped nicely. He knows that he's got to be a little conservative in that braking area to ensure that he makes the apex without too much drama. You watch how much room he does a 21.62, so hardly any different to anybody else. The number you said before, anything better than a 21.6 is very good. Watch how much road he uses from here down into turn seven. Watch here at the apron. If you were to freeze frame that left rear, it was sitting at the edge of that concrete apron. That's so the we'll nicest run through those two corners near, wasn't it? So we'll get our second timing reference here, and this is very strong. So he's done a 25.9. Uh, oh, he missed the apex. He's running in too deep. He made the same mistake as Todd Hazelwood, maybe even slightly worse. But at that point, his number at the end of Sector 2 is the fastest so far for everybody. This is going to be so tight with Cam Waters. Very close at 12-2-3. Unbelievable job there, Gisbergen. Great job. That is staggering. Sorry, I fucked up turn 11. Yeah, he made a little blue down there at turn 11. But he still achieved a 1 minute 12.23. He's come home by 3 one hundredths of a second, Van Gisbergen, over Waters. And that was just that moment down there that cost him. This was gorgeous. Beautiful. This looked absolutely brilliant. Nice and shiny run through there. One turn in, one leap across the kerb and landed with no bouncing on the other side of it and then did exactly the same through the next one. Now a chance for his teammate, Jamie Winkup, who was on form last weekend. Not only last weekend, on form this year. He's had a couple of round victories. He's adding to his already incredible and impeccable tally of victories and armour or poles in his career. He's had 122 victories, 89 armour or poles. And at this location, the numbers are off the scale. 12 victories for five poles for 18 podiums in 26 races. We've been going to Townsville since 2009. That is a hall of success. So his comments earlier in the day, not chasing too much with this car. They were picking up from where they left off at the end of last week. And as it is the case with several of the others like Waters, it's just tiny little tweaks from here. And how's this for a stat? He's on the four green tyres that we mentioned before, but this is his 100th shootout. Oh, oh he made a mistake. massive slide. He had the rears locked there at turn three. He did a really nice job in terms of its overall sector performance, but that will have hurt him 
coming out of the bus stop. So he locked the rears. He was right out sideways before the apex. And it's still locking the rears. It locked the rears there for turn seven also. Now he still achieved a, one, a correction of 21.5 in the first sector. And he's done a 26-2 in the second sector. So it's looking worse externally than it is on the stopwatch at the moment. But there's two shots that we've seen so far where he's got the rear alive with that car and skating in. So Jamie Whitcup pushing hard. This car at or over its maximum. Into the final corner now for the seven-time champion. Nice steady exit out of there in second gear without wheel spin. And the number for Jamie in the end is a 12-4. 12-4 for a P6. Watch this. So this was wild on the run into turn three. It just got away from him when he started to load the car up with right lock on it. And then we saw another one of these a little bit further into the lap as well. Jamie's listening in the background. Hey, mate, it's Neil. A couple of moments where the back looked pretty lively for you there. Yeah, just lost the rear on a couple of occasions. And um, that was the end of the lap time, unfortunately. So I've got my bit, bit of hard work to do this afternoon. Thanks, Jamie. P6 at the moment on a 12-4. All the best for today. Yeah, Thank you. Cheers. You can tell by his voice there he's despondent, isn't he? Now, Scott McLaughlin. The focus going into today was about trying to make a car that was better in its qualifying trim. That was the weakness for two of the three races last weekend. So far, 52 victories, 70 armour or poles. And this afternoon it was 245th supercar race. So it gets the lap underway. The best we've seen so far today in this shootout is a 12-2-3. 12 twos have been the best number that we've seen. He's got the qualifying record here in an 11-9, but he did that several years ago. Four green tyres for McLaughlin. And makes the apex nicely. That little bump over the kerb there won't hurt him at all. See what this first number is. 21.51. So that's the fastest first sector of the lot. I haven't seen very many people clipping and hopping over that curve down there at two. This next one's the really key part of this story, and it glides over there nicely. Through five and six, it looked good. In fact, he had some space to the outside. Again, hops nicely over the curve through seven. 8, 9, 10, easy oh. flat on a brand new tyre. And check this that number for you. It's inside a 26. This could get down to the very low 12s. It might even be better than that. He's done a 25, 8, 9 in the mid sector. It has just a tiny little wag at the tail on the exit of turn 12. Feeds second gear to the left hander. Turns it in. A little bit of left front locking as it floats in the air down there. No wheel spin on the exit. They're looking at the data and he knows that this is going to be a good lap and that is a 12 yeah, flat from McLaughlin for another awesome. pole. Great work, mate. That's a very, very good number. He gets home by 0.21 of a second, takes it to career pole number 71, six now at this venue, and 10 in 2020. So best number we've seen so far this weekend. Scott's listening in the background. It's Neil. Congratulations, mate. That was a beautiful lap. Yeah, thanks, boys. The cars, oh, credit to the guys. Uh, the guys are just absolutely made a rocket ship this weekend, or at least made an improvement, and I'm really proud of them all. It's bloody awesome. Hey, Scotty Mark Scaife, it looks much better in Sector 1. It struggled there last weekend. The car is so far better in that first phase of the lap. Yeah, I think, honestly, I'm breaking like 20 metres deeper there because I've got the confidence. So, it's uh, unfortunately, we had a little bit of a blip in the radar, but uh, credit to the team for always bouncing back and never giving up. So, uh, really proud of that. Mate, the rest of the top ten is covered by nothing. You've gapped everybody by two tenths of a second. Superb lap, mate. Well done. Oh, that's what we like to hear. So, I'll we'll just keep doing our business and see if we can get off the line this time. Well done, Scott. Have a great run this afternoon. So... Armour or pole Thanks, for Scott McLaughlin came in on a 12-2-2. He raised the bar when it counted in the top 10 shootout to a 12-01. It's not often that you go quicker in the shootout than you do in qualifying. That's the rollout for you. There's our grid for this afternoon for our first of three sprint races. How's this? McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen side by side. Waters and Deep Pasquale next. Then Mostert and Hazelwood. Windcup and Percat. Followed by LeBrock and Reynolds. And then these were the guys that didn't make it into the top ten. And there are some numbers that you see there against names that you might not always see. So expect to see a lively run this afternoon as different people play different strategy games with quick cars to try and dig themselves out.
Armour of Hole Award for race number 22 of the championship. And once again, Scott McLaughlin gets the job done. Beautiful lap. His first sector was impressive. His second sector blew the numbers away, got into the 25s in the second sector, and then he just stitched together beautifully in the final sector, gliding it over those curves. No evidence of trauma anywhere. They knew in the crew that this one was on. And Ludo points to the number. How's that? Everybody else was staring at it too, Ludo. A one minute, 12.01. And he comes into the garage to thank his crew from the Shelby Power Racing team. It is now 71 Armour All Career Poles for Scotty, 10 in 2020, and he continues to march ahead with his numbers here. He's now got six of them at this location. That was a very impressive run. It certainly was. Beautiful lap. No evidence of a mistake anywhere. And you could tell by Richard Harris and Ludo when they were looking at each other when he was just about to come onto the straight. Richard was nodding, Ludo was nodding. They knew it was ripper lap, and it certainly was. Lounsey? Scotty McLaughlin, uh, congratulations on another Armour All Pole Award. That's your sixth here at this venue. Yeah, look, I'm um, really proud. Uh, that one was, um, you know, a really hard-fought one from the team. We've uh, obviously not had the best car last week, um, but we battled on and, and found a really good balance today and had a big focus, so really proud of them. This is all credit to the guys. Yeah, the car looked really nice and flowed really well, the back section over those curbs, and you'll be able, able to keep that mid-corner momentum. Yeah, absolutely, I've, and just keep the flow, and, and, and you uh, you got confidence. Like, I can break deep and, and uh, know what I got. Last week I had no predictability about the car, so every time I was putting my foot on the brake, I'd, I'd be like, ah, I don't know what I got. So now I've got an absolute a great car. Um, yeah, really proud of everyone. Starting on pole. Good luck to Bloody up Thanks, man. Thanks. This Jamie, <laughs> wink up. You can't hear uh, Scott McLaughlin talking his car up. We just saw yours with its tail wagging like a dog. Can you fix it for the race and come back from seventh, mate? Uh, <laughs> we hope so. Yeah, we've made our afternoon a little bit harder for itself. Just, just made a little error. Um, haven't seen the data yet to see why it locked the rears, but just locked the rears. And uh, when it's so close, yeah, you drop a lot of spots by a small mistake. So um, we'll, we'll do what we can. Strategically, last weekend, really enjoyed you see, see you do something different to the field. We yeah. might need to see that this afternoon, mate. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. To, to make up some spots, you've got you to um, go outside the norm. But I'm okay. um, not sure if that means two tyres, four tyres, three tyres. I'm not sure yet. But, um, yeah, we'll try to make up some spots. I love the fact that this new world's got you all guessing. Well done, mate. Good <laughs> luck. Mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jack buddy. LeBrock, after a tough run last weekend with some mechanical dramas, you made it into the top 10 shootout today. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, um, I suppose it's my first, I suppose, official top 10 shootout. We'd gotten top 15 in Darwin and stuff, but, yeah, first top 10, and, uh, yeah, pretty cool. But, yeah, I just got to get into into these sessions with the green tyres, um, a set of green tyres up our sleeves. So, um, but, yeah, pretty happy. The guys did an awesome job, so, yeah, wrapped. With no green tyres to qualify ninth is a great effort. You turn your attention to the race run now. What does that look like for you this afternoon? Yeah, look, I, I've just got to try and get off the line. I think my starts have been pretty atrocious the last few rounds. So, um, yeah, a bit of work during the week trying to fix that up. But, um, yeah, fingers crossed I nail that. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. You made mention of your starts. I saw you today in practice go down there and line up behind Shane Van Gisbergen. His start looked OK. You left a couple of 11s. What have you got to do to improve those starts? <laughs> yeah, that's what I've got to try and get rid of, those 11s down the road. I think, um, yeah, I'm just struggling with the, the clutch release, just trying to get drive it off a bit smoother. So, um, yeah, it's one of those unfortunate things. Things. There's a few things you want to try, but being on the road is a little bit difficult. We've got to try and get parts in, but with everything, it's a little bit difficult to do that. But um, that's right, working away at it. I've just got to try and get my, um, my left leg to, to play the game. I'm sure you will. Thanks <laughs> for chatting with us, Joe. Thank you very much. Cheers. Anton Di Pasquale, sorry, just having to quickly grab you from the truck there. Great to see you in the top 10 shootout. Were you happy with your performance? Uh, yeah, it was okay. I mean, obviously, Scott made us all look a bit slower, but before that, it was really close and, you know, 0.0. X will get you a few positions, so uh, it was good. Our car from practice was pretty average, and then we turned it around to front two rows, so it's, uh, it's good. What can you guys do when you say Scott made us all look so much slower, but it is so close? I mean, what, what can you do to get that little bit more? Um, I don't know. Like, obviously, it's still close. Um, I'm pretty good, like, start a lap and the end of the lap, and then that middle sector is where I sort of lose most of my time. So uh, that's something we'll work out tomorrow. Today is all about making the car last, and our race car last week was all right, so it's a fair bit different this week, so hopefully it's the same, but uh, we'll get an hour and a bit to think about it and uh, work out how we got at the end fastest. I appreciate dragging you out of the truck there, <laughs> yeah. so I'll let you get back to it. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, cheers. It's not a good sight. Inside the Tickford garage, an engine change for Lee Holdsworth and not a lot of time. So we'll follow up that story for you to understand why. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll also have a chat with Cam Waters. Stay with us.